Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing separable polynomials over a finite field of characteristic P. Okay, so we've now successfully then proven theorem 1. We've proven that if you have an irreducible polynomial in the ring of polynomials over your finite field of characteristic P, that that is going to be a separable polynomial. Okay, what we now want to do is discuss theorem 2, which is going to go further and completely characterize which polynomials in the ring of polynomials over this finite field of characteristic P are separable and which are not. And the theorem is exactly the same as theorem 2 um, that we saw in the video on separable polynomials over a field of characteristic 0. And in fact, the proof is going to be identical, but I am going to repeat it here just for completeness. Okay, so... Uh, Theorem 2 then, and we'll colour in Theorem 2 as well, we'll underline it in a nice colour, so we'll have it in purple here. Right, so firstly let me just state Theorem 2. So, Theorem 2 is that P of X, which is a polynomial that is a non-constant polynomial, okay, is separable, okay, and that's why we know it's going to be a non-constant polynomial, because um, we are... Uh, well, the adjective of separable is only applicable to polynomials that are non-constant, not the zero polynomial, and not a non-zero constant polynomial, because they're all units in a ring of polynomials over a field. So P of X is separable over the field capital F, and then here it comes, if and only if, okay, so uh, the two statements are equivalent, and what's the other statement going to be? What's this other condition going to be? Well, the other condition is that if you take this polynomial P of X and you factorize it out into its irreducible factorization in the ring of polynomials over the field capital F, then all of the irreducibles in that irreducible factorization are distinct. You don't have any two which are associates of one another. Okay, so let me write this out. So let's say here is P of X and in the ring of polynomials over the field, what we can do is we can factorize it out into a product of irreducibles, f1 of x times f2 of x times all the way up to, let's say, fk of x here. And the condition is that all of these irreducible factors here, f1 of x, f2 of x, all the way up to fk of x, they have to be distinct. Okay, so this is a statement that you can do in the ring of polynomials over the field capital F. Okay, you can factorize P of X down into its irreducible factorization, and of course, we know by now that in a ring of polynomials over a field, uh, you know, factorization into irreducibles is unique. This is a unique factorization domain, so this polynomial will have one and only one irreducible factorization up to the fact that you can tinker around with which associate you're using, okay? And we now need it to be the case that when you concoct this irreducible factorization and look at all the different irreducibles in it, that you do not have any two which are associates of one another, okay? Um, so it cannot be the case, for instance, that f1 of x and f2 of x are associates of one another, i.e. that f2 of x is some unit times f1 of x, and you could pull that unit out and then put f1 of x to the power of 2 here. Okay, each of the irreducibles must be distinct. That's the condition. Okay, and as I say, this is exactly the same condition that we know is true for separability in a ring of polynomials over a field of characteristic zero. Okay, so I'll just stress again that P of X, we know that it's a non-constant polynomial because this isn't even applicable to polynomials that are constant polynomials. Constant polynomials are not separable. Okay, you can't apply the definition of separable to a constant polynomial. It's only for the degree uh, one or greater polynomials that you apply this for, and those, of course, will have a factorization into irreducibles. Okay, so that circumvents the problem that the degree uh, zero polynomials and the zero polynomial itself uh, don't have factorizations into irreducibles because they're just units or the zero polynomial. Okay, right, so let's now prove this statement. So we're going to start actually with the only if portion because the only if is the easier portion and then we'll go on to the if portion. And in fact, the only if portion gives us quite a bit of intuition as to why this is actually true. Okay, so only if 
only if, of course, corresponds to proving this arrow here. It corresponds to proving that if p of x is separable over f, then in the ring of polynomials over the field f, p of x must have an irreducible factorization where all of the irreducibles are distinct. Okay, and the reason that only if corresponds to that is that if indeed it, it is true that when this is true, it implies this is true, then the only way for this to be true is for this to be true, because if this isn't true, it cannot be that this is true, because if this was true, it would imply that this was true, and therefore uh, you'd have a contradiction, so it must be the case that this is false. So the only way for this to be true is if this is true, if it is indeed true that this being true implies that this is true. Okay, so I hope you've managed to follow that, even though it is a bit of a tongue twister. Okay, so only if corresponds to showing this arrow that this implies this. Okay, so, um, we will start then with the assumption that p of x is separable over f. Now, of course, that means that if you create the splitting field for this polynomial, then in that splitting field, or rather over that splitting field, p of x will split into a beautiful factorization of linear factors, and all of the roots will be simple, i.e. no multiplicity is greater than 1. Okay? Um, and what we're going to now do is we need to prove that it implies this, and the way that we're going to do that is by contradiction. We're going to suppose that this isn't true, i.e. that I can write p of x as, uh, well, I, I write p of x into its irreducible factorization, and bam, I do not uh, get it the case that all of the irreducibles are distinct. I get two that are associates of one another, and then what I'm going to do is arrive at a contradiction for p of x being separable, and hence, if this is true, then it must be true that this is true. So, let's say then that p of x can be written uh, into its irreducible factorization and they are not all distinct. So let's say f2 of x here happens to be an associate of f1 of x. That means that I can write it as a unit, some constant polynomial, times f2 of x. Sorry, not f2 of x. f1 of x. Get rid of that too. Okay, some constant polynomial times f1 of x and then it will continue on like so fk of x. And if you like, you can swallow this constant into another one just to get rid of it if you like. Okay, and just change the associate of another. Okay, the important thing is here that now we have f1 of x appearing twice in this irreducible factorization. Now, if you then imagine going up to the splitting field for p of x, uh, which is a field extension of f, then over this splitting field we know that p of x will factor down into linear factors. That means that all of the irreducibles here will factor down into linear factors over the splitting field k, okay? And of course f1 of x will split down into linear factors and it will have a bunch of roots. But of course now, if we look at this, we're going to get f1 of x factoring factorizing down into linear factors twice, so we're going to get all of those linear factors appearing twice is the problem. If you like, to make it more obvious, I could put f1 of x squared, like so. We then, over the splitting field, factor f1 of x down into its linear factors, and we get all of these linear factors with at least multiplicity 2. Okay, and that, of course, means that those roots are not simple roots, contradicting p of x being separable. Okay, so it must be the case that if p of x is separable, that all of these irreducible factors uh, in the factorization in the ring of polynomials over the field, uh, f, must have been distinct. None of them can be associates of one another. So there's the only if done, and now let's do the if, which is a slightly more difficult argument, but not too much more difficult. Okay, so of course if corresponds to proving the arrow in the opposite direction. It corresponds to proving that Indeed, if p of x is writable as um, this factorization into irreducibles where all of the irreducibles are distinct, then it's true that p of x is going to be separable over the field f. Okay, so I'll just colour this arrow in in purple here. So we want to prove that this is a sufficient condition for this to be true. Okay, rather than just a necessary condition for it to be true. Okay, so uh, let's do this. Uh, so what we're going to do, once again, of course, is we'll assume that this is true, and what then we'll do it again by proof by contradiction. So we'll assume the opposite of this, we'll assume that p of x is not separable, and we'll arrive at a contradiction to this. Okay, so if p of x is not separable, then in the splitting field for p of x over f, there must exist some root for p of x that is a multiple root, i.e. is not a simple root. Okay, let's call this root alpha. 
So alpha is going to be an element of the splitting field k, and it is going to be a multiple root of k. Now that means that when p of x splits in the ring of polynomials over the splitting field, then x minus alpha must appear more than once. Now remember, in the ring of polynomials over the field capital F, p of x is supposed to have this factorization into irreducibles that are all distinct, and no two of these are associates. So I'll write this out here, f1 of x, f2 of x, all the way up to fk of x. So this is the statement that we can make in the ring of polynomials over the field capital F. So I'll just color this in, in red here. Now, in the ring of polynomials over the splitting field, capital K, what, of course, we can do is factor all of these down into their linear factors, and then we'll get P of X written as a factorization of linear factors. And I'm now saying that X minus alpha must appear at least twice. Okay? Now, here's an important understanding point. Where are these X minus alphas going to come from? Well, my claim is that they cannot both come from one of these irreducible factors. I, it cannot be the case that if I, for instance, take f1 of x here and now factorize it down into linear factors in the ring of polynomials over the splitting field, I will not get both x minus alphas appearing in it. Okay, and the reason is that these are all, remember, irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the field capital F. So by theorem 1, we know that they are separable. Okay, i.e. when you go into this splitting field, they are not going to have repeated roots, okay? They are only going to have simple roots. So if x minus alpha does appear in the factorization into linear factors for f1 of x over this splitting field here, it can only appear once, which means that it must appear, x minus alpha must appear in the factorizations into linear factors of two of these irreducible roots. And just arbitrarily, let's say it's f1 of x and f2 of x. So let's say f1 of x has the uh, linear factor x minus alpha and f2 of x has the linear factor x minus alpha. So understand that the reason I can say that, the reason I can say that x minus alpha squared doesn't completely come from f1 of x is because of theorem 1, which we've already proven that uh, all of these irreducible polynomials are separable and therefore that all of their roots are simple. Okay, right. So now what I know is that both of these polynomials have alpha as a root. So f1 of alpha is equal to zero and f2 of alpha is equal to zero. Okay, now what does this allow me to do? This, is, I claim, is going to allow me to conclude that these two polynomials, f1 of x and f2 of x, are not um, distinct. They're associates of one another. And the reason is that alpha is obviously algebraic over the field capital F. Okay, because look, it's the root of a non-zero polynomial here uh, over the uh, field at F. Okay, so alpha is clearly algebraic. That means that there will exist a minimal polynomial for alpha over F, which is an element of the ring of polynomials over the field capital F. And remember, it's the unique monic irreducible polynomial in the ring of polynomials over the field F that has alpha as a root. And we know from our study of algebraic field extensions that any other polynomial in the ring of polynomials over the field F that has alpha as a root is going to be a multiple of this, i.e. it's going to be in the principal ideal generated by this. So I can now conclude that my polynomial f1 of x and my polynomial f2 of x are elements of the principal ideal generated by the minimal polynomial for alpha over f. Now, uh, where further from this? Well, remember what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to prove that these two are not distinct, that they're associates of one another. Now, how can I arrive at that? Well, the minimal polynomial for alpha over f of x, that's irreducible in this principal ideal. All the polynomials that are just units times this, which will have the same degree as this, they are all irreducible in this principal ideal as well. Everything else, um, all of the ones where you've taken the minimal polynomial and times it by something uh, of degree greater than or equal to 1, those polynomials, those ones with higher degree than this, will uh, not be irreducibles, because obviously they split down into that polynomial of degree greater than or equal to 1 times the minimal polynomial, which will not be a unit. Okay. The only exception to all of that is then the zero polynomial, but we're not interested in that because we know that these are not the zero polynomial. Okay. So if these two are going to be irreducible, they must just be units 
times the minimal polynomial for alpha over f. Okay, so I can write f1 of x as some constant polynomial, let's say c1, times the minimal polynomial for alpha over f, and I can write f2 of x as some constant polynomial, let's say c2, times the minimal polynomial for alpha over f. Okay, and of course what I can then do is just rearrange this slightly, write at the minimal polynomial for alpha over f, at over f uh, as being equal to f1 of x times the multiplicative inverse of c1, substitute it in here and I then get that f2 of x is equal to c2 over c1 times f1 of x. Okay, so from these two statements I can arrive at the fact that f2 of x is equal to c2 over c1 times f1 of x, and of course this will now just be a constant polynomial, a unit, so clearly the two of them are associates of one another, contradicting the fact that you have a um, distinct irreducible factorization. So what we've now proven is the if statement here. If it's true that uh, p of x has a distinct irreducible factorization in the ring of polynomials over the finite um, field of characteristic p, then it must also be true that p of x is separable, because if you assume p of x is inseparable, uh, then you can contradict, you can prove a contradiction, i.e. that uh, p of x did not have a irreducible factorization of all distinct irreducibles. Okay, so we've now completely characterized which polynomials in the ring of polynomials over a finite field of characteristic p are separable and which are not. Okay, you cannot make a comment for the constant polynomials, those don't have the adjective applied. The separable polynomials are those which, if you find that irreducible factorizations in the ring of polynomials over the field capital F have all distinct irreducibles, and those which don't have all distinct irreducible factors, those are the inseparable polynomials. And that's exactly the same as is true in the ring of polynomials over a field of characteristic zero. Okay, what still remains to discuss is those fields that are not finite and which have characteristic P.